If you're like most fly fishermen, you will find any opportunity to pack a fly rod with you during your travels. In this case, I happen to be traveling to the U.S. Virgin Islands in November. I was staying on St. Thomas Island near Red Hook. In researching where to fly fish, I found that deep sea fishing was what most people did, and fly fishing was almost non-existent. After spending many hours on forums, YouTube, and emailing the local Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, I came up with enough information for a DIY fly fishing plan. The following has been suggested by those who were successful. The top recommendation was on St. John Island in a bay called Mary Creek. This was the only location that had saltwater flats. According to a local fisheries biologist, I could find many species, including bonefish and tarpon. All fish would be catch and release only. When planning your trip, you will need the following gear and equipment. I'm using a St. Croix 9-weight 4-piece travel rod with a big game Ross reel. The line is a weight forward floating line and the leader can be 10 to 15 pounds. I'm using a 15 pound fluorocarbon monofilament that is about 10 feet in length. It has been suggested that a tapered leader is not necessary. The number one suggested fly is the chartreuse and white clouser, tied on a saltwater hook sizes 2 to 8. The other top suggested flies were small deceivers, crazy charlies, gotchas, and the bonefish special. What you choose to wear will be important. Flats wading boots are a must. The sediment is a mix of rock, sand, and grass. Swim trunks are fine, and a long-sleeved, quick-dry fishing shirt is recommended. The fishing shirt really served me well in protecting me from the intense sun. Also, make sure the shirt has a lot of pockets. The pockets were extremely useful in holding my gear. You will also need polarized sunglasses and a good hat. I particularly like a hat with a chin strap. The wind on the island is always blowing. And finally, a small chest pack to hold the flies and the tools. The roads on St. John are made up of extremely steep hills and switchbacks. You must rent a four-wheel drive Jeep if you're going to do this right. The town of Cruz Bay on St. John has many Jeep rental places, but do yourself a favor and rent one for the whole trip. In the town of Red Hook on St. Thomas Island, I took the ferry boat to Cruz Bay on St. John. The cost was about $50 for a round-trip ticket. Once in Cruz Bay, I took Highway 20 along the coast. I traveled a mountainous road littered with steep hairpin switchbacks and no shoulders. When coming on a switchback, it's always good practice to honk your horn to warn oncoming traffic. The switchbacks are brutal. The road will eventually take you to a parking lot at Annaberg Sugar Mill Ruins. Park in this lot and walk across the road to the water's edge. As you're facing the water, the saltwater flats will run all the way to the left. This is Mary Creek. I noticed some mangrove trees with pelicans feeding in the area. This was a suggested spot to fish. Unfortunately, it was midday and I only had a couple hours that I could fish. I managed to get one quick strike and landed a bright colorful bait fish that was the size of my fly I was using. It was very humbling. I do know that sight fishing is the best way to fish the flats. Watch for emerging fins and activity. You will need to know how to double haul in order to make long casts in the wind. Even though I didn't have enough time, just being able to get out there made it a successful adventure. I learned a lot, and hopefully others can learn something from my experience.